This is the best looking Axial ever. What's going on everyone? Here today is the newest release from Axial, the new CJ7, and it looks fantastic. It, I mean, they nailed it. It's properly licensed CJ7. Uh, it's exactly what so many people have wanted for so long. And there's always reasons that these things don't get done or can't be done at a certain time, but now is the time that it finally can be, and they did it so, so well. It is an SCX 10.3, and it comes with proper straight axles underneath of it, which is the important parts. Underneath of this really good looking body is the SCX 10.3 that you've seen many times before. It's got the transmission with the forward and high mounted motor. It does have the additional micro servo installed from the box, so you're gonna be able to use the dig function. Now, if you wanted, you could convert it over to the two-speed function by moving that over. The stock radio will allow you to use one additional feature, either the dig or the two-speed. I prefer dig, I really enjoy using dig. So I'm gonna leave it how it comes out of the box. It does come with lights pre-installed, which is a nice touch. Those are powered from the two-in-one ESC, ESC receiver combo that it uses. So pretty basic there, keeps the cost down. It's a decent enough unit and it can get you down the road for quite some time. The CJ does get the cast pan hard mount that we first saw in the base camp. That's a nice bonus. That was a weak point of the SCX 10 threes before. So getting that part pre-installed to metal saves you some cash and there's really no reason to change it after that. A lot of the good is just what you can see. You wouldn't have to say anything about it. You could just spin around it and see so much of the good. But I am gonna go over the things that I'm gonna to have to point out. And they're gonna be minor things, but they're gonna add up to some things to know. Maybe give you some ideas for the future. But if you just really like CJs, you just really want a CJ, then it's just, it's that truck and they did a great job at it. But I'm gonna point out a handful of those things that I did notice and let's talk about more of the good first because there is a lot to point out. The CJ7 body is done so well. It's topless with this molded cage. While we do have the Lexan body shell, there's a lot mounted to it. Things like these front fenders, which are injection molded all the way down through that quarter panel. The injection molded front grill with the proper looking light setup. That front bumper with the very large stinger, but that's also appropriate to this style or this era of Jeep. Big stingers were a thing and a lot of people like them. They're not my style, but it looks right on this. And it's about the right design as it keeps it, you know, very functional. It'll keep this truck from going over forward. On the back of this Jeep, they've increased the wheel arches in general to try and make it, you know, appropriate for a nice large size tire. Opened it back up. It's not quite comp cut, which, you know, a term where that means that they cut the fender well straight back from the top of the wheel opening, but it does have the armor that's mounted to the body. So it goes around, goes all the way up to that door frame around the corner and captures the tail lights in there. The rear bumper, flush bumper with D-ring mounts and D-rings added to it. It's got an additional license plate mount that is bolted on there with an Oregon Axial SCX license plate there. The doors on this are functional. There's a little body clip in here. And if you pull that up, you can then swing that door out. Opens up and you can see the depth that this interior has. And in that interior, you're gonna find a ton of detail. Molded seats, uh, a molded center console, molded shifters. There's three of them. So you have like a twin stick transfer case and then the shifter for your actual transmission. The dash has a molded top cap to it. And then you have a Lexan front to it that's got the appropriate CJ style gauges there. Molded steering wheel, steering column, and the uh, indicator stock that's on there. The center console on this actually opens. It's got a little clip to it and you can pull that clip up and then flip the top of the center console open. Uh, you can use that for whatever you may feel like stashing in there, uh, it's functional. 
The doors themselves, again, are just retained by a, a little body pin. They're not particularly easy to access, probably be a little easier if you use like a needle nose pliers, but it gets the point across and again, it is functional. The sliders on the side are attached to the chassis, not to the body. So they'll protect the body, they're nice and rigid and uh, it gives the body somewhere to sit down into. The sliders have a Genrite logo that's printed in there. And Genrite is a full-size off-road company that makes aftermarket parts for Jeeps like this. And they aren't on the armor or the front fenders, although I do believe that Genrite also makes those items. So maybe everything could be considered to be Genrite, maybe even the bumpers, but there is no additional branding, only on those sliders. Tires and wheels. For the tires, we've got some Mickey Thompson licensed tires on some beadlock wheels. The wheels on here are race line wheels. They look more, you know, appropriate to the area of like a, you know, steely style wheel with a beadlock, but I'm sure that race line makes something that looks just like this in a machined wheel. Being that this does use the AR45 straight axles, it does use some pretty long shocks as Axial has done with this platform and these axles for some time. So it sits pretty tall. That's, you know, taller than I would really want it to sit. I would ideally like to sit nice and low, uh, of course, but it's still, it's fine. You know, it gets nice flex to it. The suspension's gonna move around just like you'd like. Those of you thinking about picking up this body set, which will inevitably be available in some form in the future, whether you have to piece it together or not, I can imagine it's going to be quite the handful to assemble. These rear armor pieces are screwed on in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve places per side. So there's twelve little screws all the way around on each side. Then you've got the windshield bracket set up with the hinges and places for extra lights and the side mirrors that you know rotate in and out of the way. The cage set, the interior, the grill. All of this is going to be a very expensive body set if they sell it complete. I will be surprised and also anxious to see the price if they do, because there's just so much to it. That front grill, this thing looks great. They did it the proper way because it's licensed and the injection molded grill gives it the nice depth and the proper definition to it. The lower lights are just clear, not amber. So you could add some detail paint to those if you wanted on the inside to make them look like an amber lens. One of my small gripes is that on that grill, you can see all like the ejector pin setups from the mold, like all the way around it. And it, it distracts a little bit from how good it looks. And again, the things that we're gonna get into now on the, call it the gripe side, are minimal. The overall package here is very cool. But let's get into a handful more of those little things that I noticed. Out of the box, the decal application on this isn't fantastic. The windshield decal, for example, on mine is fairly noticeably crooked and it doesn't stick down around the outside edges. There's a detail that's molded into the body around the windshield and that causes that outer decal to not wanna lay flat. So it's, it's up all the way around. I can grab the edge of it all around it. If you're looking at improving that, you could either cut out the center of it so that it helps lay flat. You don't get that bubble effect in the corners of the windshield. And then you could probably use a heat gun to help lay it down, or you can pull it all the way off and add your own detail trim around there. Same kind of goes for this hood graphic. It doesn't lay flat in the crease here along the center of the hood. It, you know, bridges that gap a little bit. Not ideal. Also, down below the front links. It looks like at some point they made an adjustment to the wheelbase and that's causing about a three millimeter gap at the front and back of each of the links between where the shoulder of the rod end is and the shoulder of the link shaft. You can tell that ideally they should each be in about three, maybe four millimeters per side. So I think they stretched that out likely to try and get a little bit better tire clearance. They might've been having some rub on this at, uh, at full stuff while turning in one direction. Just a guess, but you can tell that that was not the ideal setup for the actual design of this. Now the part that I've been holding off on for the longest portion. This body is the biggest pain in the butt to get 
not off, but specifically back onto the chassis. I've done it a handful of times now, so I'm getting better and faster each time, but I'm gonna time myself how long it takes me to put in this 3200 milliamp 3S Smart Pack into this truck. I'm gonna time it. I'm gonna try and not talk too much over top of it, but see how it goes. Done. It's not an exaggeration. I'm not stalling. To, like I've had it go faster. I've had it go much slower. It's not an easy body. The sides of the body don't love to fall down into the grooves along those sliders. And the inner fenders hold the body from wanting to like set down around it. It's a problem that we saw on the JL previously as well. Probably happened on the, you know, Gladiator, some of those. This is a little bit compounded, I feel, because of like the body armor that's molded onto this and the front fenders being all molded plastic. It takes even less of the ability for the body to flex out and around things. It just makes it a real bear, but it looks really good. So I suggest throw a big battery pack in there and don't take the body off very often. <laughs> I'd say the addition of like a dead man switch, which is where you have like a physical battery disconnect somewhere else, may not be the worst idea. Big picture, this is an SCX3 like you've seen before, but with a new really cool body on top. And now it's about time to get this out on the rocks. The SCX10 3 hasn't always been my favorite performer. That forward motor sits a little high can be a little tippy. This has got a lot of details up top, a lot of weight with this body, just with as much stuff as they put into it. So will the added function of the dig and that transmission help? I do love dig. In the end, let's go see how it performs. <laughs> 